come from? Oh, I just dropped in to see how you were getting along. Oh, always get along fine. Got the boys out. Going to bring the herd in. Well, you sit around taking cat naps, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Who, me? I want to sleep. No siree. Just rest my eyes, that's all. The fact of the matter is, Jan, I, I've been trying to figure out my resignation. Your resignation? Well, what's wrong, Gabby? Oh, there ain't nothing wrong exactly, but I've been doing a lot of thinking since your uncle died. You're going to inherit the flying tea and got your own little place down the road and your own foreman, and I naturally figured you'd want to combine the two ranches. And you'd like to be moving on? Well, well, I, I ain't want to stay where I ain't wanted. <laughs> You're staying, Gabby, just as long as you want to. Thank you, Miss Jan, thank you. Now, I'll do the very best job I know how. <laughs> You're doing a good job ruining that newspaper. Huh? Oh, oh, that, well, that, that's last week's paper. I'm, I'm a little mite behind my reading. Say, uh, maybe that's what puts you to sleep. Roy's paper? Shuck, you know better than that. He's the best scooper in the country. Knows what the people want. Now look at this. Look at this here editorial he wrote about the uh, Hereford breeders putting better beef on the table. Look at that. Roy! Roy! It's Ricky. He's drowning. Ricky? Drowning? Well, let's go. You got me just in time. Yeah. Uh, it's all right, Ricky. I'm back now, Ricky. Hurry up. He's digging deeper all the time. 
We can't just drag him out. You don't want to break his neck, do you? You mean it's dangerous? Well, he must be tangled in the weeds on the bottom. We've got to handle him like the big ones. Get in there and tail him. Raise his hind legs. Don't worry, Ricky. Just stay there. I'm sorry, Ricky. I'm trying not to hurt you. A little bug right in his feet. Back to my early training. Yeah. Oh, do oh. Well, that's the star for you. Always around when the news breaks. How are you, Jan? Hello, Roy. That's it, Duke. Keep him coming now. Now, that'll teach you not to go wandering off like that. You might have drowned. Duke? You better take that misfit Maverick back to the ranch and dry him off. Yourself, too. He ain't a misfit. Any more than I am. He's Prince Ricardo the 44th. That's right. We did name him that, didn't we? Well, you better take your royal highness back to the barn. Okay, Gabby. Get along, little doggie. Get Come along. Come on, Ricky. Go ahead, Ricky. There you are. <laughs> Never mind your horse. I'll take care of him for you. I haven't seen you much lately, Roy. I've been sort of busy. Say, Gabby, I got a telegram from one of the big newspapers in St. Louis. They're sending a reporter out here. What for? They want a feature story on the flying tea. I guess they've been hearing of the kind of cattle you've been raising. You have to talk to Miss Jan about that. You know, she's going to be in charge here. The St. Louis Chronicle has a little bigger circulation than my paper. It might pay you to get in a plug for the spring cattle auction. Well, that's an idea. I'll let Gabby do the talking. I wish old Sam Talbot was alive to tell it. What a story he could have told. All the years he put in building the herd and proving the breed. Well, I guess that's the way it goes. Less than you've been in trouble or scandal or something. Papers never say nothing about you until after you're dead and gone. Okay, Jimmy. Thanks for helping us catch him. Sorry to keep you waiting so long. I guess you want to put an ad in the paper. Ad? Yes, I do. In 72 points type. One quick return ticket to St. Louis. St. Louis? Then you must be the reporter Kennedy sent out here. That's right. Connie Edwards, Chronicle. How are you? I was told to look up the editor here. I'm the editor. Roy Rogers. Say, they tell me there's quite a ranch out here. The Flying T. Yeah, Sam Talbot's place. The best Herefords in the country. But you don't have to take my word for it. I'll run you out there. You do. Were you awake, Gabby? Of course I were awake. Just rest my eyes, that's all. Rest my eyes and thinking. I was thinking of all the bears and buffaloes I killed. Thousands of them with my bare hands, right on this very ranch. Well, well, what is it? Why'd you come in here pestering me for? I wanted to ask you something. A question. It's sort of important. Well, all right. What is it? It's about Ricky. Well, what about it? 
I thought, well, when they give Miss Chan the ranch, if she'd let me keep it. Well, I don't know. Sit up here, Sean. Duke, we should never keep Ricky in the first place. Oh, his bloodlines is all right. He just didn't turn out. That calf will never win no prizes. He doesn't want to win any prizes. He just wants to be with me. Well, that's just trouble. Ricky just don't measure up. I'm afraid Miss Jan won't want him around. Why, of course I will. Do you mean that, honest? I wouldn't think of sending Ricky away. Well, that's right nice of you, Jan. I guess you and Duke will be friends for life. You bet we will. Steve, Debbie. Hi, Jason. Howdy. How's law business? Not bad, not bad. Well, I guess we're all here, are we? We will be as soon as Roy Rogers gets here. Run along, son, and see if you can find Bob. All the relatives are on hand. These are the ranch hands and their families. There's only one relative, the niece, Jan Holloway. She's probably inside. Thank you, Rory. Howdy, folks. Hello, Bob. Hello. Hold it, Jason. Here comes Roy. Hi, Gabby. I thought you said you were bringing a reporter from St. Louis. That's right. Meet Connie Edwards, St. Louis Chronicle. This is Gabby Whitaker, the foreman here. I do. How do you do? You didn't say nothing about bringing no female, uh, I mean, girl. Not that she ain't welcome. Come in. I told you about Jan Holloway. Oh, Jan, meet Connie Edwards. Hello. This is the foreman over at Jan's ranch, Steve McClory. How do you do? How do you do? And this is Duke. Hello, Duke. Hello. Hello. Well, I guess you all know why you're here. I know Fuss and Feathers will get right down to reading Sam's will. He came to my office and I drew up his will for him. March 13th it was, just two months before his unfortunate accident. Well, I'll read what it says. I, Sam Talbot, being of sound mind and memory, and not acting under undue influence of any kind, do hereby declare this my last will and testament. I wish to provide for the men who have worked under me faithfully and loyally. The ranch hands, their wives and families who have been living on Flying T Ranch land shall be permitted to retain their homes rent-free for the balance of their lives. Now, Bob, you better go out and tell them. They're waiting to hear. You bet I will. Roy, there's something Sam wanted you to have. It's a book of hymns and old songs. He wanted you to remember a particular hymn, his favorite. He said you'd know what it was. Thanks, Duke. I think you'll all be interested in this next paragraph. Get ready. Here it comes. To my niece, Jan Holloway, I bequeath the sum of $5,000. <laughs> you mean $5 million, don't you? Read that again. To my niece, Jan Holloway, I bequeath the sum of $5,000. And I leave the entire ranch, the cattle herds, land, and all other assets to Duke Lowry. Duke! Did you hear that, son? But Jan Holloway is the only legitimate heir. And she's Sam Talbot's only living relative. That's no concern of mine. Do you mean to say that Sam Talbot would leave a 12-year-old boy in charge? Oh, but that's all taken care of. Gabby will act as executor and guardian until Duke becomes of age. Gabby did this. And a scheming, meddling old fool. Just what do you mean? You plan this. Trying to steal the ranch for the boy so you could get your hands onto it. You can't say this to me. Hold it, Gabby. You can't settle anything like this. No, we'll settle this in court. I'm advising Miss Holloway to contest the will. Charging fraud and conspiracy. By thunder, if I could get my hands on you, I... Just a minute, Gabby. You better leave, Steve. Just where do you come into this? Steve... Get back to the ranch. I'm sorry. Well, that's just Steve's loyalty cropping up. He'll get over it. He'd better. 
I've been in feuds that started over less. No more worries, Duke. Nobody can take Ricky now. That's all I care about. I hope you won't print any of this little argument, Roy. I'm sorry, Jan, but I have to print the news, no matter what it is. Congratulations, my boy. Thanks. Well, Duke. Say, Gabby, yeah. don't you think we'd better take the new owner outside and introduce him to his hired hands? Yeah. Wait till we tell him. Come on, hurry. Old Sam sure disappointed that girl, didn't he? He sure did. He was a sprightly old bird, wasn't he? Mm-hmm. How old was he when he died? Seventy-five. I heard he was killed in an accident or something. Is that right? Yeah, he was riding home and his horse threw him. Riding at that age? I saw him top a bucking bronc when he was sixty. He's been riding that old white horse he is every day for years. Say, I wondered why he wanted me to have this hymn book. Roy, for reasons of my own, I believe something may happen to me. In the event of my death, I am asking you to make an investigation. For reasons of his own? What do you suppose that means? It means it wasn't an accident, that he knew he was going to be murdered, and wait till Kennedy hears this. Connie! Stay away from that phone. We can't print this story. We're not sure of it yet. What are you, silly? It's a murder angle. It's news. We're not going to print it. What did you just tell Jan Holloway? You print the news no matter what it is. That's different. Do you want to tip off the murderer? Besides, I don't want anybody to know I'm making an investigation. The Hereford Clarion. It's the star. No wonder you're... What are you doing here, Devoria? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all, Mr. Rogers. I saw you was talking, so I didn't bother you. You want something? Well, I was going to tell you and that reporter woman that supper's about ready. Miss Edwards is not staying. Oh, yes, I am. I like it here. Clean smell of the country and the fresh air. Why, it's just like a vacation. What are we having for supper, Devoria? Fried chicken, ma'am. Fried chicken? With all those filet mignons running around the pasture? Well, you can't cut up those prize-winning steers for steaks. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the guest room's ready, miss, at the end of the hall. Thank you, Devoria. Connie, we better make a deal on this. We'll work together, but we won't print anything until I say so. You're setting up the rules, huh? I'm doing what I think is best. Well, I guess there's no point in arguing with you. That's more like it. Oh, my, I left my suitcase in the car, and I guess I'll have to go out and get it. I'll get it for you. Thank you. Hello, operator. Get me the St. Louis Chronicle, quick. They seem to think that Sam Talbot was murdered. I don't believe he was killed accidentally. That's your Roy Rogers for you. Roy didn't write this. It was that girl he had with him. Good. Sure. And he gave her the story. Where are you going? I've got a little business to take care of. You won't see those headlines in the paper anymore. Look, Steve, I'll take care of this. From now on, you're not going to make a move until I tell you. Well, I hope you know what you're doing. I don't think either one of us like that word. Murder. What's the idea? Oh, that? Hmm. Good story, don't you think? You don't believe in ethics, do you? You agreed not to print anything. That might have been your idea. It wasn't mine. So you end up with a half a story. And it might stop any chance we had to find out if Talbot was murdered. Look, Roy, I'm a newspaper woman. I print stories while they're hot. It's a printer's ink in my blood. I can't help it. Okay, if that's the way you want to work, it's all right with me. But from now on, you get your own news. 
Oh, that means I write exclusively for the St. Louis Chronicle, and you write for, uh, let me see, I can never remember. Oh, the Bugle. The Star. Of course. Hey, look, if you're trying to stage anything for my benefit, you're just wasting your time. I wasn't on the stage about it. I hear Duke Allen come out and see what the trouble was. Are you all right, son? Yeah, but when I went into my room, there were two men outside the window. That's all. Those two men together. That's all. Now, 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 now. We'll take care of them. Get your horses, boys. I'm going with you. What for? You can read about it in the star. one for the obituaries. Yeah, too bad we didn't get a chance to talk to him. He ain't from around here. None of us ever seen that face before. Did we, boys? Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's even better. Mystery angle, body with no identification. I wonder who this is. Hello, Sheriff. Hello, Jim. We were just going to send for you, Sheriff. I'll bet you were. He's dead, isn't he? About as dead as they get. Hmm, plumb center. Anybody mind telling me how this man was killed? There were two of them prowling around, Sheriff. They started shooting and made a run for it. The other one got away. Sure like know what they was up to. I'd like to know a lot of things that are going on around here. Especially this article about Talbot being murdered. I'm sorry, Sheriff, but I don't know a thing about this article. It wasn't in the Star. Maybe you'd better ask Miss Edwards. Connie Edwards, St. Louis Chronicle, Sheriff. Any statement? Can we expect an arrest within 24 hours? How do I know? I didn't know anything about this until Jan walked in my office and made a complaint. Oh, so that's why you're here. Miss Holloway, how does it happen that you're so concerned with this story? Well, you might as well have said that I killed Sam Talbot. Your deduction was clear enough. I was left out of the will, so naturally Sam must have thought I was going to murder him. I'd like to know what your information is, young woman, and where you got it. Oh, well, Sheriff, I'm sorry. I can't reveal that. Oh, you can't, eh? Well, you listen to me. There's been a man killed here, and you seem to have private information about things. Now, you better start talking and talk fast. Oh, look, Sheriff, I'm a newspaper woman. We don't reveal the source of our information. Hmm, big town stuff, huh? Well, that might be all right where you come from, but I'll tell you the way this bumpkin police force operates. You won't talk, so you're going to jail. Jail? Uh, uh, uh. Connie. Oh, tell him to bring my coffee in later. Tell Kennedy I said this assignment still. Connie, it's time to get up. Hey, where am I anyway? Oh. Roy's gone bail for you. Gee, thanks. I'll let you go as soon as I fill out your release. What time is it, anyway? 5.30. 5.30? You mean people actually get up at this hour? What are we going to do, milk the cows? You're going to the Tuesday morning breakfast club, remember? 
Oh, Roy, can't they change it to Wednesday? Look at my clothes. I look like I've slept in them. We'll take care of that on the way. You looking for this, Cinderella? All right, Roy, if you'll sign this. Okay. I'm releasing you, but don't forget, you're coming up in front of the judge Thursday morning, and you better have your answers ready. Aren't you being a little generous, Sheriff? After all, that gives me almost two whole days to solve this murder. If Talbot was murdered, I'll solve it. If he wasn't, you'll have some tall explaining to do before you can clear yourself. Well, I'll probably be back, so don't let anyone have my room. Much obliged, Sheriff. Let's ride up and greet your neighbor. Let's ride up and say hello. Clap your face up in love. Don't let Mr. Groom creep in. Take the hand of someone near you. Pals until the end. Every Tuesday there will be breakfast fun for you and me. Where a friend can be a friend. Sam Talbot's horse. What are you doing bringing the Major here? Hello, Major. I found him breaking out of his stall. I guess he got lonesome just standing in the barn. He always knows when Tuesday comes around. He's a pretty smart horse. Well, they get in habits same as anybody else. Sam rode the Major over here every Tuesday morning for years. Can I stay for breakfast? Can I, Gabby? Oh, I guess we can rush you up a couple of eggs now that you're here. It wasn't my fault. The Major came over here all by himself. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> Maybe that's an idea. What do you mean? Sam was riding home from the breakfast club the day he was killed. If we sent the Major back over the same trail. Reconstructing the crime. Okay, Sherlock, I'm with you. I'm not so sure. The sheriff's watching is pretty close. How do we shake that brass badge? We'll wait till we're ready to leave. Gabby will take care of him. Don't sit down yet, Sonny. You're next on the program. Folks, we're now going to meet the guest of honor. We're very lucky to have with us today the star reporter of the best newspaper in St. Louis, Miss Connie Edwards of the Chronicle. Poor, oh, poor, oh, you ain't going to get off that easy. Boys, tell me you can sing. How about it? We have a rule around here, Connie, that the guest always pays for their breakfast. Oh. Oh, that should be easy. Boys, how about that little Spanish number? Far below the Mexican border, in a little town called Boca Boca Tin, there's a bold and dashing vaquero who has all the ladies in a spin. Miguelito! Ah, Miguelito! On his little donkey he goes riding by. Miguelito! Miguelito, all the senoritas look at him and sigh. He is handsome, oh so handsome. He could break a heart with just a rogue smile. But he'll never, never, ever, cause his wife is right behind him all the while. Ay, 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 for Miguelito. Miguelito, Miguelito. In su borito pasando por aquí. Miguelito, Miguelito. Todas las muchachas, ladies, same as me. Ay, qué guapo. Qué buen mozo. Miguelito, te quiero con feliz. Miguelito, no contesta. 
porque tiene suerte a su esposa. Ay, ay, Miguel, que triste pito, junto a la impureza, no más amor. I think. Ay, 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 por Miguelito. Yeah, yeah, Roy, what are you up to? Come back here, man, I want to see you. Oh, uh, just a minute, Sheriff. Folks like to have you make a little speech. speech. Almost election time, you know. Speech. How about it, folks? <laughs> folks, I'm honored to be here this morning in this glorious Oklahoma sunshine. It must be two years since I had occasion to visit the Tuesday morning club. Oh, yes. You know, I ain't seen so many smiling faces since we hung old Windy Bill back in 1904. Why, <laughs> I'm not sure about this. I'm used to taxi cabs. Well, I'll keep an eye on you. Come on, get on. Well... Oh, that's all. Take it easy. Now give him his head and let him pick his own way home. Give him his head, huh? Mm-hmm. And that ain't no boat. Come on. Well, I'm ready. Come on. Well, oh, that's fine. Something told me I wasn't the cowgirl type. Well, you couldn't help it. He would have thrown anybody. I wonder what made him rare like that. He must have seen a rattlesnake or something. Well, then why didn't Trigger see it? Hey, that's right. Something else must have frightened him. Something had happened here before. This is just about where they found Sam's body. Well, you certainly must have looked over the grounds. But not for murder clues. We thought it was an accident. Got there. Nothing. I thought you weren't going to hold out on me anymore. Why, Roy, you know I wouldn't do it. Oh, that I just... Mm -hmm. the watch I picked up. To Sam Talbot. In recognition of his services to the American Hereford Association. This at the time of the killing. 917. It couldn't have run underwater, could it? Not an old watch like this. Besides, the hands wouldn't turn with the crystal broken. Yeah. Let's see what else we can find. <laughs> what you gonna do with them? Well, we're gonna put them up for auction at the sale tomorrow. Look! Look, Miss Jan! The Sam Talbot's ghost. Hear that? He's moaning and yowling in his grave. Stop it, Devoria. I heard him, I tell you. It's only a train whistle you heard, Devoria. Get up. Get up, Devoria. I'm sorry, Miss Jan. I couldn't help it. That's the same way that horse came skittering in the day he was killed. And I heard that same squeaking voice right after. Devoria. I'm sorry, Miss Jan, but I heard what I heard. Jan. Come on, Jan, get hold of yourself. Thing like that's a little hard on the nerves. Let's see if Gabby's back. I still say I heard what I 
I know the Jonah was on somebody. That's the second time I heard Mr. Sam's voice a moaning. You're not superstitious, are you, Devoya? No, sir. I heard it moaning from the grave. Just like the last time that horse come in without no rider. They said it was a train whistle, but I ain't gonna bleed it. Whistle? You heard it both times? I sure did, Mr. Roy. It said, Just like that. We've got it, Gabby. Duke, you better run along with the boy yet. Come on, son. Look at this. Well, that's Sam's watch. Notice the time it stopped. 9.17. That establishes the time Talbot was killed. Well, I suppose it could have been, but I don't know if that proves anything. Well, don't you get it, Gabby? What time does the morning train come through here? 8.45, of course. You know that without asking me. Whistles for Hereford Junction. All right, figure it out for yourself. Devoria heard it both times at exactly 8.45. The watch stopped a half an hour later. The horse came in before he was killed. And Sam was murdered. What happened to him during that missing half hour? That's what we have to find out. It's a good theory, Roy, providing there was no other train through. And are you sure the local was on time? We better check on that, Connie. We'll have a talk with the station agent. Hi, Roy. Hi, Bob. Say, what's your morning train schedule? Just the 8.45. That's been on time for the last year. That ought to be a good item for the star. Thanks a lot. If you want to print my picture, let me know. This was due at the same time. It all adds up. Now, let's see. I think the next thing we should do is see the sheriff. That can wait. We're stopping in to see the coroner. He's the one man who should know whether that fall kills Sam or not. Yeah. Sure would like to take a look at the record on Talbot. Well, if you work for the Chronicle, you do it. Accidental death which occurred on Monday, May the 13th. Cause of death, depressed fracture of the skull. If you had asked me, I would have shown that to you, Rogers. Oh, hello, Judd. Well, we thought you wouldn't mind. We were just in a big hurry. I barely have time to make my deadline. I... Just a minute. What were you looking for? Information on Talbot's death. It was accidental death. You know that. You printed the story at the time. The circumstances, if you care to refresh your memory, were quite simple. He fell from his horse and struck his head. The reporters don't seem to pay much attention to the law. I caught you rifling my files. Let's see what the sheriff has to say about it. Sheriff? Sure, sure. Get him over here. I want to get a court order anyway. I'd like to have the body exhumed. Just what do you expect to find? You probably know the answer to that better than I do. You said the fall killed him. I just want to make sure, that's all. We'll see about that. I'll take that card if you don't mind.
fixed him. We sure did. Just whose side are you on, anyway? Uh. Gee, Roy, I didn't mean it. I was only trying. Yeah, I know. Come on out of there. <laughs> You'll go to jail for this, Rogers. Somebody will, but I don't think it'll be me. See who signed the death certificate. I signed it. Remember, the examination better not show any new evidence. It doesn't match your official report. Hand me a gun, Tony. Let's go. last night? Yes, I see you did. I was afraid you might not be here. Why, sure. Why wouldn't I? I guess we're all in this, whatever happens. Well, that's what I want to speak to you about, Judd. Steve was afraid he might talk. Oh, no, Jan, I wouldn't. You don't have to worry about that. You know, there's going to be a lot of questions asked when they dig up that body. You can answer them, can't you, Judd? Sure. I got it all figured. I got a doctor picked out, a friend of mine. He'll make the examination and find the same thing as I did. Well, we just wanted to make sure about you, that's all. Thanks. Now, you better run along. Thanks, Jan. Well, see you later. You she did. I just saw her kill Mr. Judnick. Roy, he was right. Judnick was in on Sam's murder, and Jan's free to talk. She probably went back to the ranch. Yeah, and she'll have every hand on the place gunning for us. We better pick up that posse. We'll be back, Duke.
Gabby. Sam's gonna make a getaway. Well, come on. I'll show you how we done it when I was fighting Asians. <laughs> can't ride that freight train. What are you trying to do, get us both caught? We got to split up, Jan. You're on your own. Steve, I'm going with you. And get both our necks in the noose? No, not for me. Steve, you better take this with you. Where's Steve McClure? He's gone. You finally got around to calling on me. Took a long time. There's no use trying to hide anything, Jen. No, Duke told us all about it. Duke. You needn't worry none. He's all right. You want a story, don't you, as usual? I killed Sam Talbot. Wasn't much to it. He was riding back from the breakfast club. And Steve stopped him on the trail and told him I'd been hurt down by the falls. We talked to him to try to find out if he changed his will. That accounts for that missing half hour. It was clever of you, Roy. Figuring out about the watch. Deciding that the horse had come in before the accident. It was bad luck. It was the only mistake we... Jan! Who did it? Steve? Yeah. Funny how I like that guy. I know he wasn't worth it. Train whistle. It's the one thing that caught us. Now it's taking Steve. Take care of her, Gabby. Help Gabby, I've got to catch a train. <laughs> Get up.
So you're the one that helped kill Sam Talbot. He's your man, Sheriff. You'd better start cleaning out a few cells. The pioneers are coming in with the rest of the gang. I'll sure do that, Roy. Come on, you. All right, inside. I suppose you'll be going back to St. Louis. No, I haven't finished my assignment yet. Oh? Uh-uh. I still have to see how Ricky is. For the Chronicle? No, for the Star! <laughs> He's looking fine, Duke. Thanks, Roy. And look at how big he's getting. <laughs> well, I don't know what cured him, Roy. Either I guess wrong, well, which ain't likely, or the boy's faith pulled him through. It's a miracle, that's what it is. It's all right, Ricky. We'll both grow up someday. 